Welcome everyone tonight to the football game between the Milton Red Hawks and Monroe Cheesemakers. Uh, we have a nice night here at Carl F. Anderson Field and we're going to see an interesting game tonight. Uh, the Milton Red Hawks are off of a, coming off of a 33 to 14 win over Oregon and Monroe uh, is coming off a win against Stoughton, their first win of the season. Uh, but I understand tonight that Milton has a number of injuries and my colleague uh, over here, John Holt is going to update us on the injury report for the Milton Red Hawks. Well, the injury report looks pretty bad. Uh, one of the coaches was joking with me before the start of the game that I should just announce the injuries rather than the starters. The list was longer uh, and very important. Evan Phillips, of course, uh, starting junior quarterback uh, who, who has accounted for over 1,100 yards of offense and 12 touchdowns this season uh, is out. Adam Katakutin is, is still out. Uh, wide receiver Cedric King has been out much of the season uh, Sam McCann a huge loss the state's number one rated tight end is out as well a late late uh, scratch and Luke Gans who uh, has accounted for 21 receptions 235 yards and two TDs so we are out a whole lot of offense uh, John that's almost uh, from the games that I've done here at home that's almost uh, well, three starting wide receivers or three receivers in our offense that have been out and Riley Kovars was out of game uh, when those other three were playing. So we've never really had our contingent of uh, receivers for a full game this year. No, we haven't. And Monroe comes off in a rather emotional win uh, where John Becker, number 24, their running back, accounted for most of their offense, including a 75-yard punt return for a touchdown, 176 yards on 23 carries, and a 96-yard touchdown run. So it should be some exciting time set. Okay, Milton's getting poised for the kickoff here. Monroe's going to receive... A rather short kick to about the 20-yard line. Monroe's taking the ball, breaking the outside. Good coverage. John uh, the held John Becker to about a 10-yard return after returning a uh, punt uh, before that's probably a good accomplishment. So. Well, and the, and we did kick it right to him. So apparently our coverage team feels pretty secure in being able to stop John. Well, I remember doing a game last year, John. Uh, Monroe came out with a formation, a running formation that we had a hard time adapting the first half to. They held on to the ball a long time. I wonder if we're going to see some of that tonight. Well, that was the old-fashioned single wing, and, and I would dare say we're going to see it again. Now, if you'll remember, our defense, once they figured it out, was pretty good at stopping it. Right. Looks like we're going to like we're gonna see it here. Now there's some shifting done. Now, this is kind of a throwback to the early days. First play, direct, first. direct snap to John Becker. Caleb Pagel, the quarterback, was back in the backfield as well, but that was a direct snap to John Becker. And he got 10 yards and running the right side for first down in the first play. So uh, this is what we had trouble with last year in the first half. Hopefully we are uh, be off to a better start tonight. Well, the thing, it, it, it challenges you because you have to make decisions really, really quick. Um, of course, you're, as an offense, you have to be very secure in how you handle the ball. Because if any miscue in the backfield, and you're liable to give up points on a fumble. Well, they don't know which guy's going to get the basketball, so it's our basketball, get the football, so it's hard to key. And that's Caleb Pagel on the run, quarterback Looks keeper. Like now, running the left side, they got 10 yards. So on two running plays, they've got oh. 20 yards. I'm sorry, that was Alec Birkenau, Birkenlaw. Well, that was about a, another 10-yard gain. So now they've went outside twice. And I, I don't know, they're, it looks like they try to suck you in. They don't have any wide receivers. And then they hook you and run to the outside. And they haven't snapped to their quarterback yet. They haven't snapped to the quarterback yet. I think our, our, our cornerbacks might have to come up a little bit. Okay, single wing. This time the run's up the middle. This time much better. Uh, about three-yard gain up the middle. And again, that, that run by Becker. Uh, it's har it's hard to describe the formation. You have a a down lineman leading, a down fullback leading the blocking, and you've got two people at the ball could be looking both to get the ball when it's snapped about three or four yards deep in the back and go to either one of them. So uh, linebackers aren't aware of which one's going to get it. Stop by Ian Johnson and AJ Natter. You always have a two lead blockers on every play here. Well, it's a lot like the old wishbone, only it, in, only it moves faster. Right. There's a, there's a uh, misdirection play. Handoff again to John Becker. 
Oh. But we might have a, we have a flag down. I kind of believe it might be holding. holding. Yep. Looks like it. He had an awful big hole in the left side, and I think now it's probably one. One again. Uh, you you have a lead blocker or two lead blockers in every play, but they are running backs. Yeah. And you'll note they're not going to run that very much into AJ Natter. No. Well, the question. Or Ian Johnson, for that matter. The question here, John. Um, I don't. How much? How much passing yards has Monroe garnered for this year? I, um, that's a stat I do not have. This is not a. This formation is not a normally known as a passing formation. I suspect that they get you set up for the run and then or fake something and probably try to go deep on it. If there's going to be a pass, now would be the time to look for it because you got second down and about 16 to go. It's actually second and 18. When again, it, it's not an offense that's going to catch up in the middle of a game. Here we, <coughs> there we're on a, on a run to the right. We did a nice job of stringing that out that time. We didn't get hooked and we got good uh, flow toward the ball side. And again, that's Birkenlawn. I don't think we've seen more than one play with the, with the quarterback actually taking the snap, and he did a quick handoff. No, nope. lost a couple. So now um, we've got third and 20. If they're going to throw, now is the time with any kind of passing attack. Uh, last week, Monroe had all of 14 yards passing. Yeah. Third and 20. And you can see why. Yeah. And we've got everybody. We've got... Um, eight or uh, nine guys up close to the line of scrimmage so it's there's all and with that many guys in the box that misdirection still works pretty well that was a nice play and and we're fortunate whoever made the tackle there we're fortunate he made that tackle because oh somebody is hurt for milton bob called that as aj natter uh on the stop uh aj made a nice play because it, he had a running lane that i don't think he would have been hit but the injury looks like he dislocated. He's acting like he dislocated can something. You, can you see who that is? It looked like number 30. That would be Jeremy Talbert. I'm That's not I'm right not, position on the field. I'm not sure. I thought that was 30. Well, I almost thought it was 38, but we don't have a 38, so I'm pretty sure that was okay. that's Jeremy Talbert. Does is Jeremy normally start in the? Yes, he does. Well, it kind of fit the pattern of another injury here. When this is a year we can't afford it, as, as I've said before, you know, normally my, my roster sheet goes down one side and then back up the other, and this yep. year it's not it's not all the way down the, the first side of the page. Um, we're nope. a small team. Yeah, no, and some years, some years it just seems like it's injury upon injury. But it, he's been staying, he's down a long time, so there he's getting up. Maybe he got the wind knocked out of him. Well, luckily, this isn't like the NFL where they think if you're faking it, they're going to steal draft choices. Right. And that is Jeremy. He's coming off limping a little bit, so he may, maybe twisted a knee. He's under his own steam, though, so yeah. hopefully it's not too bad. Well, uh, we're going to see our first punt tonight. The Cheesemakers are going to punt from about the 45-yard line. Riley Kovars is back in the back deep to receive the punt. Alex Dock back to kick. Nice punt. punt. Riley comes up to grab it. Nice running catch. On the return. And down about the 26, 27. Right Riley had some room to the outside, but he stumbled a little bit when he caught the ball. Uh, but Milton will take over on its own 27. Kick returning is, is such a hard thing. Most people think of it as, as easy, but it, it's it's an incredibly hard thing. Especially, I think, when you're back there by yourself. When you have two people, one can kind of tell you where the defense might be, you know, and, or what to do. But you got otherwise, you got to be looking yourself, and you got to look where the defender is, see where the gap is. So again, we have Tyler Westrick, uh, freshman, starting at quarterback for Milton. Takes the long snap. Handoff to running back. Is that Coomer? That's Josh Coomer. Okay. And we have a flag. I almost think there might be a face mask penalty. Well, let's talk, John, about Tyler Westrick. He came in last week after Evan Phillips got hurt and did a fairly nice job, didn't he? Well, Tyler Westrick has been highly uh, uh, touted as, as, a, as a very, very talented up-and-coming quarterback uh, along the lines of Nate Hammond. And uh, he did very, very well. I mean, 8 of 17, 87 yards, two touchdowns is very good for a freshman coming in cold. Um, saw the game. When he had been in earlier in, in kind of garbage time in games, it, you know, 
he looked a little rusty, but when when the pressure was on and he had to perform, he performed, and that's that's always the mark of a good athlete. Well, and the nice thing tonight is Tyler being a freshman, but he had a whole week of practice where he gets reps with the number one team, and that's got to help his confidence a little bit to get reps, to get a lot of reps with the number one team. He's the only one taking the reps. There's another handoff to Coomer. For no gain. Coomer the ball carrier. Well, who are the new, besides Riley Kovars, who are the new receivers? Who do we have in? Well, you have Riley Hold out wide on the other side. Um, Tanner Deegan, of course, is, is a normal wide out. Um, and Devin Hartman, who's been sharing duties with the other wide receivers. So uh, as far as that goes, we still have uh, two regular, three regular wide receivers out there in the normal formation. But in the five receiver set, we're going to see someone else. Yeah. Here's another hand, uh, inside handoff to Coomer. He breaks into the open. Coomer gets first down. Now the one thing we're not seeing, you notice the runs are going to the inside. And, right. and of course Sam as tight end is, Sam McCann is out as tight end. So we have a replacement there. Well, in the spread, you spread them out and you just even up the numbers. And so um, they have to cover everybody. And only we've got five inside defensive people being blocked by five uh, offensive people and if you win the if you win the, the battle you're going to get yards that time we lost the battle there it looked like Monroe might have been, com been coming on a blitz there we lost five on the initial handoff well it's I think it's time we, we launched the passing attack we have it we know Tyler can throw we know the receivers can catch yeah. well now would be the time to throw our first pass I suspect it would be a short pass, let Tyler get his feet wet, being that he's a freshman. Oh, there's a handoff to Coomer. Coomer it's about three yards back. It's about three yards back, and so we got now third and 12. My guess, my guess is we'll see some type of short screen pass, something that doesn't go downfield just to get his, I mean, when you have a young quarterback, it's good to give him an easy route, something easy to throw quick so he doesn't get pressure in his face. Or a little bubble screen with a pulling oh. receiver right. out on the block. Back for his first pass. Oh, he's actually looking down deep. Kovars. And the pass to Kovars is out of bounds. Now, uh, definitely, uh, Tyler has a great arm. That was a nice, that was about a 40 yard pass in the air. Uh, he got a little bit too far out and down the sidelines. Looked like Riley got some separation there, but, but he ran out of room along the sidelines. But, but I suspect we'll see that come back later tonight. And you know, the mechanics aren't, aren't quite, say, that of an Evan, AJ Junior Evan Phillips. Well, on your first pass, you're a little anxious to get rid of it. Who's punting tonight for the Red Hawks, John? He gets a, launches a punt down, oh, goes into the end zone. Who, who took Sam McCann's That was A.J. Natter. A.J. Natter's punting. Well, um, for the viewing audience, you'll see a replay, a replay flag when we're doing a replay. And uh, you'll also see scores marked out on the replays. So we're, we're going to have a little more replay action tonight. Well, that'd be good if we get a long play to come back and see it. There was a nice run. By John Becker. Was he hurdled John? the defender. John Becker's a nice running back there. Well, well that's, that's, that's the older style of running back. He's not a scat back. He's not an overpowering back. He's just a, a good, strong back with some speed. And he follows his blocking real well. He doesn't get away from his block. He doesn't make a lot of fancy moves, but he just, uh, when somebody puts to tackle him, he, he hurdles or he gives a little a shoulder fake and he does a nice job. It's a good offense for him. And if you, you also notice, he protects the ball pretty well running, which some younger players don't do today. Okay, we have second and two. John Becker takes the handoff. And it looks like the stop by A.J. Natter for a first down. Brought down by A.J. Natter and Danny Hahn. First and 10, Cheesemakers. Well, we got first and 10 again. Monroe started out this way. They got two first downs in their uh, first couple possessions, and then we held them. Uh, they get a first down now. For those of you at home, you're, miss, you're missing a beautiful fall night, 54 degrees. The flags are lying flat on the pole. There's no wind at all. It's a nice night for football. This is, this is the type of weather you envision for a football game here. Nice fall, crisp that night. Run to the outside. That is to Caleb Pagel, the quarterback. 
who is in that formation just another running back. Now the inside, the inside, the receiver goes inside and he just kind of shadow blocks and they try to beat you to the outside. I think an adjustment to this formation would be some type of zone defense where your corner sits right outside and doesn't and takes on that lead blocker. Well, either that or you know, <laughs> considering how, how little they pass, a cover two where you have all both safeties and both corners—they just, they just come up higher, all yeah. the way up. Yeah. There's that. And off to John Becker. A little inside trap play, as we call it. They really don't have a lot of plays, and they're about four plays, and they just try to they execute those. Well, if they can beat you at the line, uh, this will be a long night. Who are some? Let's identify some of the people on defense here, John. Uh, who are the people across? I mean, we know we read AJ Natter and, a, and Ian Johnson's Ian name Johnson. a lot. Who else is in the interior line for Milton? Um, you have Brandon Tornow, who is having an excellent year. Um, Trying to read some numbers again. Here's another snap inside handoff. Oh, nice move by the running back. Is that Becker again? That's Becker, Becker again. Jerry. You'll yeah. hear us say Becker, number 24, all night long. Danny Hahn, number 32, is also in the interior line. Uh, excellent athlete. Who's our linebackers at the second right level here, John? Well, let me <laughs> I don't have them memorized. Let me, let me read okay. some numbers. Uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot, oh, but no. I think I want our viewing fans here to know some of the kids out there. We have number 28 coming in now on defense, and that looks like it's Brock Krebs. Brock Krebs, uh, Avery Sweeney at strong safety. Brock Krebs replaced uh, uh, Jake Grunzel. You have uh, Paczynski and Clark out at the corners. Right, another, in, another inside hand or inside sweep. Baron Claw with the carry. I tell you, in watching this offense so far, Number 33, that lead fullback, uh, does a nice job of getting into his man and driving him back and just getting enough of him to get the edge. Well, he's got some nice broad shoulders. And I just watched him block A.J. Natter there. He knocked the game. He uh, hooked A.J. And, and opened that area up for seven yards. And A.J.'s a tough person to block. But again, when you're running sideways or backward, uh, it's kind of hard to defend yourself against a big, strong, square-shouldered back with a, with a head of steam. Exactly. Here's another direct snap. There's that inside handoff again. This time we did a much better job. That was a nice play by our defensive back number. That was Connor Preston, number 42. Connor, Excellent play. Connor Preston. Who's playing uh, free safety. Tackle on the play by 42, Connor Preston. Yeah, he did a nice job, Connor did, of shedding his blocker. And Don, I'd like to thank Tyler Bingham for work doing our camera work tonight. Yep, Tyler's been with us. First game Tyler's with us. He's given excellent views here. We want to thank him for doing that. Direct snap to John Becker. That time, the nice inside handoff. And certainly we want to thank Dale Kittleson in the booth downstairs, again, who sets all this up and makes this broadcast possible. So thank you, Tyler and uh, Mr. Kittleson there. Stop by Krebs and Sweeney on, this, on that play. Monroe's not getting a lot of big plays, but what they're doing is they're grinding. They're taking their three-yard gains or four-yard gains, and they're making first downs and keeping the ball away from our offense. Well, and they're attempting to wear down the defense. Now, the, the flip side of the coin is that your offensive line eventually is going to get pretty, pretty wore out as well. We have a shift. Do you see any the pattern Monroe. when they shift? Do they go to that side or do they run away from that side? They, go, they go to the side. They go mostly to the right on the shift. On the direct handoff or on the short um, end around, they come back to the left. Brock Krebs made a nice tackle there with uh, about a two-yard gain. And John Diesler. John Diesler's in the defensive line as well. And you know, you pointed out it was rather interesting because when they were attempting to shift and catch the personnel in stance, and, and it worked. Yeah. Now, uh, Connor Preston just came out and, and uh, Shane Cassidy went in the defensive backfield. So we got a new, new strong safety in. 
And our safety switched from free to strong fairly, fairly evenly. That time. Jeremy Talbert, back from his, in, back from his little uh, knee twist, is a great stop. Jeremy, made a, he, defeated, he defeated the offensive lineman at the point of attack. I mean, they had two people back in the backfield. It didn't allow that play to develop. <clears throat> Good penetration. Well, the way, they're, the way they're running the single wing, you will leave a gap or two open. Yep. Now Monroe's in a passing situation, something we haven't seen them able to do here. I'm waiting for them to pull off some type of inside fake or sweep and pass off of that. Yep, there, there it is. And there's Caleb. Sorry, that was Baron Claw on the pass. It's hard to tell. They're, they're run, all three of them will pass or run. And it was a nice pass play. He just it, he just overthrew the ball, but he has a nice arm. He looked like he threw the ball well. He just let him about three yards too long. They're going to go for it again, so I'm sure we're going to see some type of pass play here. Okay. And that was Alec Dahl covered by uh, Riley Clark yeah. on that play. Riley was out on an island there. Well, this so far what we've seen from Milton is bend but don't break defense. You know, there Monroe's moving the ball a little bit, but we're not we're not breaking, giving them the big play. Well, we're gambling and we can score more points. Fourth and 12 here from about the 22 yard line, 26 yard line. He dropped back a little screen play the way it looks. No, it isn't a screen play. And again, that's Alex Barronclaw. That was a very strange offensive play, John, because it looked like they allowed our defensive lineman to come through and and then they throw the ball deep into the end zone. It didn't, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, unless, unless you're attempting to run a spread offense and you want the defense to overrun. There was a lot of room underneath. That's why I was surprised I didn't see a receiver underneath. Yeah, there was no bailout receiver at all. No. Now Milton is in trips to the right. Wester cans off to Coomer. A little opening for about five yard gain. Really, uh, what we've seen is that we've seen Coomer run about five of the same running plays. It's just man on man block and he looks for the seam. And Coomer is deceptive. You think he's got two yards and then you look at the stick and it's five. Five yards, yeah. He, he gets ahead of steam. He, he, uh, like they say, good running backs lean forward. And Coomer seems when he gets tackled, he'll go down and go forward for another yard and a half. And lots of good running backs will run under the yeah. defensive lineman. And, and, he the seem, and he seems to do that very well. He gets down low. We have two. Ian Johnson also runs under the linebackers. Who else? Okay. So we've got tri trips to the right again. Coomer on a ha handoff to Coomer. That time, that time Coomer only gets a couple yards. So we're down to about we're down to third, about third and four. Thirty-three. Third and a long four. Third and a long four. We're almost going to have to start. We're loading up on the offensive right side uh, with Kovars, Deegan, Hartman on the on the right side, Holt on the left. There's a. There's Tyler Westrick kept the ball. Uh, he the I know it's going to be a close for the first down. You know, it's on, it was almost better to have let uh, Coomers kept the ball. He <laughs> he actually got first yard down, first down yardage. So it looks like from here, I think they're going to have to measure. It's going to be. It looks like where he's standing, they've got it. But it's well, close. It's going to take a while because the officials are sprinting across the field. I don't know. It looks like the one chain game member on the left might have a hard time making it across the field. So we might have to a little delay for oxygen uh, here, John. But I, oh, now they made it over. Oh, no. He's not as bad as we are. Come on. <laughs> Okay, they're stretching out. We can't first see down. They did get the first down. We knew it was going to be close. First and ten, Red Hawks. Well, we've seen Tyler's arm. I, I think we need to see his accuracy. Yeah. A uh, couple of short passes in here. Maybe throw underneath the defense. They're actually lining up their, uh, their safeties and corners fairly deep, which, of course, also leaves some gaps for uh, uh, Josh Coomer to run. So... Either way, I think I think this is play. Their defense is playing to our strengths. Well, they're playing. They're playing. You know, it's five offensive linemen against five defenders, and so it's pretty even. Wester takes off. A nice, nice pass going to his left. 
caught by Devin Hartman. Devin Hartman. That was a nice play by Tyler Westrick. He's going, he's having to throw across his body and still make the completion. We want to let all Red Hawks fans know we have a guest up in the booth tonight. Bruce Rupp now is up in the booth with us tonight. Bruce has been a backer of Milton football for a long time here. Son Colton played last year. Son Colton played last year. Maybe later we can get a and couple. Up, and up to Josh Coomer. Coomer Maybe later we can get a couple words from Bruce on his observation. I don't know if Bruce has seen any of the games. The words of wisdom. We also have Robert Evan Phillips up in the up in the booth. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Evan's up here watching. Maybe we can get some words from the quarterback. Yeah, see how he's doing tonight later. Gain of three, second and Evan would probably much rather be down in the field. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I, got, I would guarantee that. We got second and eight. Fake handoff, Wester keeps. Wester a couple of good keeper. blocks, there's a flag down. We might have a hold. That's what I'm looking for. Usually when in that vicinity of the run, two, that's usually some kind of hold or crackback block. And that's the end. Of the first quarter, Monroe, nothing, Milton. Well, I coached uh, with Ty uh, Tyler's dad, Mike, uh, uh, when he was playing. And Mike Mike uh, started on varsity when he was a sophomore both ways and, and helped us to one of our state titles. And um, if Tyler develops like his dad, that he's going to be an excellent football player for the Milton. And we have a lot of exciting things to come from him. Absolutely. Well, we've got a, another good three years of Tyler Westrick. In the offensive line for us? Yes, he has been playing uh, offensive line now for several weeks. Okay. Um, do you know who else is in the offensive West line? Maybe we always identify complete. the people who catch the ball and stuff. Besides Alex, uh, is, um, I think Tucker Heklimovich. Tucker Heklimovich, uh, Austin Powers, uh, Alec Inquist, as you said. Um, who else are some? Who Two receivers on each side. Third and 13, the ball snap. Westrick's back to pass. He's being rushed. He sees an opening, he takes off. He sees a receiver open. Oh, and, and almost a great. Incomplete. Who is that who tried to make the catch? Almost a great catch. For number 21, Tanner Deegan. Tanner Deegan, Tanner Deegan. Uh, on, on the attempt. He almost doubled up trying to catch that ball. I think uh, that time I looked like Tyler might have had enough room to run for the first down. But again, you know, when you're a freshman, that, those decisions, those are the decision makings that you gain from experience. Tyler seems to like to roll out to his left. Yeah, he, well, he throws well coming to his left. Okay, Milton punt. It's a short kick. AJ Natter on the kick. It's going to be down about on the 28 yard line by Milton. Takes a short Monroe roll. And show, Mr. Hekimovich got down there, shows the lineman can run. For center snaps the ball and gets down. Gets down. You got you gotta love that. That's old style football. And yeah, now uh, joining his dad in the booth is Colton Rupp now here as well. We have a couple offensive linemen that we could play now that Milton could probably use now with the injuries. They're up here playing on their phones, though. They don't, they're not listening to hey, us. Colton, we want to suit you up, put you on the line for the night. What do you think? Right. You'd rather not. Okay. Monroe is in an eye formation here, John. Now they're not. Straight not, handoff to John Becker. A little, a little sweep to Becker. Becker on the carry. And Becker got a good head of steam. Avery Sweeney on the stop. Now, that's interesting because, you know, Monroe is moving the ball in their other formation, and now they go to the eye formation. Maybe they just want to see for the second half what they might want to might want to do, but I, it's, I'm surprised that they would come out with something now in the second quarter. I'd come out with it, maybe something different after halftime. It's not like they're not moving the football. They've moved the football. Well, I'll tell you, seeing John Becker run from that length in the, in the power eye is, is a scary sight if you're trying to tackle him. Okay, they're back in the offset eye formation this time. A little inside handoff. That was a misdirection. Uh, Inside handoff. Alex Birken, Birkenlaw, only uh, for quarterback. Gained for one. See now in this uh, in this formation they've Stingler, gained two yards. And, yeah. If we can stop right him here, we're going to get the ball back right, right away. Well, it looks like when they're under center, uh, Alex seven. Birkenlaw is, is their preferred quarterback. Again with that big fullback and 
John Becker running. Becker with the carry. But again, our, our interior linemen are doing a good job of stacking that up. I think they're. I think the power eye is just running right into the strength of our defense. Now Avery Sweeney is listed as a quarterback wide receiver, and he made the tackle there on the inside. Is he's he, playing strong safety. Oh, he's playing strong safety now. Okay, the strong safeties are up quite a bit here. Which, well, if they can't complete a pass, is exactly where they need to be. Yeah, that was a nice stop by the defense. Three and out. Here we got a penalty on Monroe for moving early. Flag on the field. Back him up a little more. Now this is this is that this is where the bend but don't break defense really helps out because you, you let them go, you let them go, you let them go. Now they're back in their own territory. They get a penalty. They punt from further back. Put us in good position. Uh, hopefully we can take advantage of it. Well, from what I understand, last week in the second half our defense stepped up and had a nice half. Yes. Uh, in the second half, the defense played the best half of their season and it's continuing here tonight in the fact that they haven't given up uh, any scores here so maybe uh, the defense starts but might take some pressure off the offense to move the ball there's That's a nice a end over end kick we got a lineman getting downfield see number 54 run from and roll there john he got All right, let's go, offense. that was number austin barant 6 2 240, 240. Was yeah he got down the field he got down there pretty good. I was, uh, and of course, it's a good thing for them that he did because that, that took a Milton bounce. And that's really the difference between the high school level punter who, who's usually playing some other position and, a, say, a college or NFL punter. Exactly. Um, what they can do with the ball and what it does when it lands, how they kick it, the technique. Now we have, uh, Milton's got the ball. We have two receivers on each side. Tyler Kuma, Westrick is back in the shotgun. As Westrick steps up. Again, he's finding all he's. Um, and Westrick tackled at the 11 yard line for a big loss. Now, that's something Tyler's going to learn. He held on to the ball. He didn't have nothing, and he probably should have just thrown his long out of bounds to one sideline. But again, he tried to make something happen, and as a result, gave ground, lost about 35 yards. That's something that experience will help. Tyler's first move was a good one. He got free, gave himself room to throw the ball, but couldn't find a receiver. Tyler Westrick on the run. Gets Westrick back to about the 15. Ball, Let's go offense! So now, we have, so now we have about third and 33. 33. Yeah, third you know, it would almost be good to throw something long down. If they pick it off, it'd be as good as a punt and maybe give you a chance to get a first down. Monroe's got two deep safeties. Third and 33, they need Freddie Mitchell out there. <laughs> oh, almost snapped over Tyler's. There's that inside. Tyler oh. throws to Riley Kovars, who loses the ball. I think they're going to call that incomplete. Ah. Westrick's pass was intended for Kovars, incomplete. Riley had it temporarily, but a, he took a good shot as he was hit, spun the ball, spun out. Good now, play. Now we're, now we're seeing Milton. <laughs> in the same position that Monroe was and pushed back in their own territory and having to punt. Both teams are moving a little bit and all of a sudden now they've stalled. The defense is, uh, each defense has made a stop. Now Milton, now Monroe should get pretty good field position here. AJ Natter's kick is good. He comes off of a Milton player. Yeah, that was, uh, that's something I haven't seen happen too much. Tanner Deegan, uh, he couldn't see the ball. It was hit the back of his helmet. Hit the back of his helmet, so I don't, there's a penalty flag down, but I don't think um, I don't think the official threw the flag saw the play. I think he might have thought there was interference in the receiver, but he really wasn't. The ball came up. Well, he didn't let the receiver catch the ball, though, did he? No. He's got to let that guy come up and catch the ball, doesn't he? Well, you got to give him a halo. Yeah. Maybe that's going to be. Maybe that'll be the penalty. He did. You don't. He had to let the receiver catch the ball. I think that's probably what they're discussing, don't you think, John? Well, if you throw up a, a fair catch signal, the, the halo is much larger, but you still have to allow them to receive. That punt was an interesting punt by A.J. Nader there. The ball, he got a, up high, but there was no spiral. It came down like it was soft landing. It was, it was uh, on our side, it was funny to see. And, it, and again, normally uh, with Sam McCann into kick, that, that's a strength of Milton. Yeah. Because Sam has um, almost a college level leg may not maybe not a college level technique but a college level leg as far as strength and distance goes 
Well, we, we still would like to say there's eight minutes left, eight minutes and 48 seconds left. And to here go we go with the replay. Second uh, quarter. Here's the replay of that. Now you can see the ball hit Tanner Deegan's helmet and go out of bounds. And one of the Monroe players almost made the mistake of fielding that after it hit his helmet. Well, waiting waiting you, for a ruling on the field here. It would be kind of a natural reaction, I think. ruling for action is a fair catch interference penalty, which is declined by Monroe. Well, that must not be a post-possession foul. They must, and so and they would have had to re-kick. So that's, they must, that's why they must have declined the penalty. And every, every level has such a different rule that I don't know all the rules for all the levels. And when Monroe's back in their, uh, their uh, po or power eye or... AJ Natter's chasing Alex Perkinlaw and tackles him almost back at the, well, at the, at the Milton 49. Both defenses have made adjustments, and what Milton's doing a better job of, they're not getting hooked on the outside now. It looks to me like they're slanting outside quicker, forcing that running back to slow down and try to look for lane inside. Well, and, and this is deja vu all over again because the last time we, we played this team in their single wing, it gave us fits for a lot of yards at the start, and then Milton's defense compensated. And Right, and you can run it in practice, but your, second, your team never runs it as good as the other team does, but you can make the adjustments from it. Okay, they're back in the single wing again. Alex Birkenlaw back to pass. Pass intended for Skylar Stingley. That was good coverage on the pass by um, Mitchell Pachinski. He was step to step with him. He was step for step. Both offenses have stalled now here in the middle of the second quarter. Well, this is where this is where this is the kind of game that whoever makes the fewest That's mistakes will win. It's going to be a turnover fumble to me the way it, the way it looks here that might decide the outcome of this game here. Third and sixteen. Third and sixteen with eight minutes to go in the second quarter. Ball on the Milton forty-eight. Birkenlaw back to pass, broke up by corner uh, Riley Clark. He doesn't have a bad arm, John, but he doesn't seem to lead his receivers as well as we've seen other quarterbacks do. Well, and, and let's face it, as much as they have to practice that single wing and the running formations they're using, he, he just cannot be getting the reps throwing in practice that you would need. Milton um, Monroe didn't take advantage of field position. They didn't get anything from the 48. They had the ball about the 45-yard line. They actually lost three yards, so they didn't take advantage of a of a field position there. AJ Natter almost gets the block. Ball is going to come take to a, a stop at about the 14-yard line of Milton, where Milton will take over. Riley Clark almost tried to grab that ball and take off with it, and uh, would have been an awful risky play. It's good thing he decided at the last second to get out of there. Common sense took over. Yeah, common sense. He had no blocking with three people coming down on him. It wouldn't have done any good to try to grab it. But Riley's, you know. a, Riley's a great guy and, and a very fast runner, but I don't think you're going you're gonna to play that angle right. <laughs> right uh, no. Tyler Westrick is back in the shotgun. Single runner, handoff to Josh Coomer. Coomer's got a good seam. And makes it all the way to about the 30 seven yard line. That's what we needed about. That was about a 18 yard gain. Yep. And I almost, that was almost like a horse collar tackle. I know. Well, and, and you know, now you've got this defense where you've got two men out on an island in coverage and everybody else is up in the box. I got to think uh, pass to Tanner Deegan is in line. Hand off to Josh Coomer, who's tackled behind the line. Okay, there was an option play that time that they ran in the, the strong safety came up and he read that all the way. He went right for, for, for Josh Coomer right away. That was Becker, who's a good offensive player. In fact, I'm surprised on offense, they've kind of went away from Becker. He got some yards early and we haven't seen him as much. Well, they might be trying to hide him a little bit. I don't think you're gonna hide him. Yeah, they're not gonna hide him. He's their best, best athlete out there. He's a marked man, regardless. Westrick back in the shotgun. Coomer in the backfield, three receivers to the left. Tyler's going through his progression. Pass intended for Riley Holt, dropped. Uh, 
in Riley's defense, that ball was a little bit behind him. He had to reach back. Um, Tyler didn't lead him as as much as he could. And it was a hot pass, but again, that's those are the kinds of passes you're going to have to catch. We got third down and 13 now. It's another passing situation. Monroe seems to be getting decent pressure with three guys on Tyler. And I don't even know if it's so much pressure, it's just that they're managing to rattle him. He's not getting through his reads. That was one of the few times he did get through. Tyler, Tyler back to pass. Pass intended for Tanner Deegan. It's, like, it's complete to Tanner Deegan, but it's gonna be far short of the first down. I would think Milton would punt here. They've got uh, third down and about eight and, to go. And A.J. Natter is back to kick. So. We've seen a flurry of punts here, John, recently. Both teams are jockeying for field position. If this, but, if this keeps up, it's gonna be the most punts I've seen all year. Well, uh, it's an interesting game. We've been here and we've seen a lot of offense here in the last in the last few weeks. And tonight, we haven't seen the offense. Obviously for Milton's injuries have taken a toll on our offensive production. Kick uh, returned by Stingley and, and Tanner Deegan on the stop. So we have Monroe taking over about the 32 yard line, six minutes to go and a half. Um, I would predict there probably, unless there's a big play or a fumble, there probably won't be a score before half here, John. Neither team is uh, making many first downs right now. Monroe's Pro back in the single wing again. John Becker takes the handoff and is tackled for a gain of about three. That was a nice play by uh, Brock Krebs coming up there and taking the legs out of him. Brock Krebs, Brock Krebs is, is a pretty strong, stout young man. He made a nice read on that play. It was a good hit. Well, he got him low, took his legs. He couldn't use his powerful legs. Uh. Well, Becker has a, has a low center of gravity for his size, so yeah, you're gonna have to take his legs out at the ankles if, if you can. They're, they're, uh, and Becker struggles. That was all Becker. He was he was hit at the line of scrimmage, and he fought for about five yards. Ball at about the 42. That was all Becker there. I think we saw him at his best right there. He was hit by two guys. He broke that tackle, and he kept going, uh, just driving his legs. In the words of Vince Lombardi, grab, grab, grab. They were grabbing him high. I don't think you're going to tackle Becker high very often. Their offense, they don't have a quarterback underneath the center, so that takes that play away. Oh, oh snap. And a missed snap. Well, that was a huge mistake for Monroe, having a bad snap. But when you run that kind of offense, you risk that. Again. And the third inches, and they lose 10 yards, or 15 yards because of the snap. The running back did a nice job getting back to just cradling the ball, not trying to pick it up and fumble it back to Milton. Ball, well, they, ball management in that formation. Well, my mistake, John, they did have the first down. That was first and first down. I thought they were, he singled three inches short, but he must have made it by made that by much. Three inches. Yeah. So now it's gonna be second down and 25. It was a 15 yard loss. If I suspect and roll to run three, a couple more running plays, take some time off and punt it away. Instead, they're throwing the football and they have a man open. A nice coverage by Mitchell Paczynski. I can, Monroe doesn't, Monroe's receivers have dropped a couple balls that I thought were catchable balls. That was a pretty nice pass mm -hmm. and the quarterback didn't have his receiver make a play there. Mitchell would have had him right at right where he caught the ball, but as it was, uh, he dropped it. And Mitchell's head was in the other direction. He couldn't see that he was actually, there's the replay, and then it was actually hit him in the back. Um, but he had good coverage on him. I mean, yeah. he, hit him, he hit him right when he caught, got his hands in the ball, and that was the difference. So far, our corners have been stride for stride with their receivers anytime they throw the ball. Hand off to Becker. Stopped for a loss on the play. Our defensive line has gained confidence as this game went on. They've taken the inside run away. So now we're going to have fourth down.
for Monroe with uh, about four minutes to go in the quarter. And Milton will get a chance to score before halftime. When you got to think that that offensive line is starting to get a little tired. Well, it seems to be. I think Monroe's playing a lot of kids two ways, it looks like. Milton poised to look like they might try a block here. Well, A.J. Netter almost got to it the last time. He's almost in a sprinter stance. They blocked him pretty well. Riley Kovar's catch. Kovar's got a little bit of a seam. Oh, uh, 41 made a nice play. Looked like Riley might have some yardage upfield in 41. Brett, Brett Zimmerman for Monroe on the stop. He was able to, uh, another offensive lineman. How are these linemen getting downfield so far, John? Linemen are a lot faster than they were in my day. <laughs> well, you know, I do have to point out that uh, the Red Hawks changed jerseys after they warmed up, and uh, Milton has never lost in their lucky Reds. Oh, that. Josh Coomer with a handoff. Josh Coomer on the carry. And close to another first down. So we got 328 left. We got a lot of time. Do we ha have we kicked any field goals without Sam so far? I mean, we're getting close to field, maybe a field goal territory here. No, Tyler Westrick banged one off the off the off the goal post last week. Okay. Plenty, plenty of energy and just came flying off the uh, the other way. Westrick on the handoff to Coomer. Josh Nifty Coomer little run. Josh Coomer uh, hurdled uh, Ryan Hughes. That play is just to whoever wins the battle inside. It's just a straight handoff. Coomer reads which way the center puts his head and goes to that gap. Again, Milton has three receivers to the right. Hand off to Coomer. Oh, that was a little high on the tackle, I think. 54 made a nice play. I don't know if he caught him by the shoulder pads. That's what uh, several of the Milton players were indicating, but uh, the referees say no. Austin Barant made that play for Monroe. It was a nice play. Monroe has some size in that defensive front. John, I mean, they're not a small team by any means. Probably more size than they've had in a while. Mm -hmm. Well, Monroe football's been down for a few years. It looks like, this looks like a better team than we've seen. Buster hands off to Coomer. Josh Coomer fights for a few extra yards. Does Milton have all of its timeouts? Yes. Yes, they have three timeouts. So I don't think time is that much of an issue here. There's two minutes to go here, but we got three timeouts, so it's, it's you know, that's having like four or five minutes, so. I think Milton wants to drive in for, for a halftime I think if you could get the halftime lead, it's gonna bode well. A little, little high on the snap, Westrick's back to pass. He's taking off. Tyler's there. gonna run. Tyler Westrick on the quarterback scramble. Gains about, almost gets the first down. It could be fourth and a yard or two here. I think Milton's gonna go for it. Well, at this point, I would go for it because really, uh, if you turn it over, Monroe's not going to score on the other, and they haven't they haven't shown a big playability. So it's fourth and two. He got out of bounds, so at least it stops the clock. And again, I have, to, I have to believe I have to believe it's going to be a quarterback draw or a handoff to Coomer. Oh, Coomer went the wrong way. Westrick is tackled in the backfield. That was just a miscommunication. He, I think uh, Tyler thought Josh was going to come to his left, and Josh went the other way to his right. And so hard to say who made the mistake there, but that's a typical, you know, youth mistake. On the replay, yeah, he, he, he turned around and no one was there, and that's kind of a lonely feeling in the backfield, especially Pat? if the blocks are set up for the run. Tyler's taken a few hits tonight. I think he's going to be sore after his first varsity start tonight. And little things you notice uh, coming off, when Tyler came off the field, A.J. Natter gave him a couple of friendly pats on the shoulder. Uh, great great gesture from a veteran to, to, yeah. a, to a freshman. Someone who's played a couple years, yep. Yeah. Made his share of mistakes and now, lived, Monroe, lived it. Monroe changed their formation. They got two backs in the backfield. Didn't help him. A.J. Natter on the sack. Yeah, Alex Birkenlaw is not, not getting the time to read his progressions. His, his receivers are covered, and, and he's not getting the blocking. 
I'm really surprised that they're trying to go deep. Because the only thing, only thing that could happen in my mind is something bad for Monroe by throwing because they're not a throwing team. They've got 80 yards, 20, 75 yards to go. Well, that's that's that old uh, story from when the forward pass was a new innovation. The coaches would say only three things can happen when you throw the ball and two of them are bad. Well, they're in a passing formation again. Working long back with the two blockers. They only got two receivers. Ian Johnson on the on the sack. Well, th this is what happens when you have a, a running team trying to pass. Well, and, and the thing of it is too, with a quick, with a quicker strike. All right, it's third down and 27 to go. I bet you this would be a running play. Yep. They're going to take off as many yards as they can. Milton should get a quick timeout and force them to punt. Now you can't take them home. You might as well take it. See, I think that's a mistake that you do it. Riley Kovars is back in the 50, waiting to receive this punt. So we could get very good field position. Pretty good snap. Low kick. Riley's Great got some Riley room. Kovars. Can Riley get on the outside? Almost breaks it loose. Gets it back to about the 38-yard line. We got 29 seconds to go 28. Possible chance for field goal attempt if we don't get a touchdown here, John. We need, we, we need about probably two first downs, probably get 20 yards realistically to get in field goal territory, don't we? And you've got time for, for two strikes. Of course. We've got one, one timeout left. Four, four receiver set. Westrick back to pass. That, that time Tyler did the right thing. His receivers were covered. He just rolled out and threw the ball out of play. And Monroe's playing containment on, on Westrick on that play. They're not necessarily trying to tackle him. If they do, great, but they're, they're wanting him to make a mistake. Right. The worst thing we want to do here is throw something out in the flat and get it picked off. You throw it down the middle of the field, even if you get it picked off. Um, and that was only a five second runoff, so Westrick back to pass. He's being chased again. He's this got protection. He and Westrick oh. rumbles to about the 30-yard line. Tyler on the he got hit pretty good at the end of that play. Like I said, I think he's going to be a little sore right tomorrow now, after this game. Well, and yeah, and he had four blockers with him. He could have stopped and read his progressions again. And that, that's, just, that's just being young and new to the position. And it took a lot of time off in that run. That scramble, we got, we got some yards, <clears throat> but time, we got 12 seconds. Time is very important here now. Even if we get the first down, I don't know if we can get um, get lined up to get another playoff here. Yeah, I think they're going deep. We got one receiver out wide. Oh. Oh. Josh Coomer on the catch, uh, tackled very hard and a flag comes in. I think they're gonna say helmet to helmet here. Clock is stopped with five seconds left in the half. Well, the half can't end on a penalty against. And the ball is spotted roughly at the 15. Ball is exactly on the 15. That would be a first down. Hey, I'd like to see them. Yep. Call from uh, the, the the PA announcer Bob Cohen is uh, again an unsportsmanlike conduct. That's going to place the ball at about the eight-yard line, first well, and goal. It gives us one play here. Well, possibly two on an incomplete pass. And Milton's going to take their last time out to figure out what they want to do. Well, it's probably a good thing, you know. I mean, I, I was thinking you could get one quick pass and see if you get it in and have one. If it was incomplete, you get one left, but if you got to play, now's the time to use it here. And so it's probably a good thing. Well, if you throw a quick slant, you've got time for two. But it'd have to be a quick slant. Yeah. Five, five seconds, a pretty quick runoff. Well, 
it'd be a quick, I don't, they can't get a first down to stop the clock. So it's, this, you know, the way the offenses have been, have been stymied here this second half, this, this is a big play. If we can get in the end zone. I think, you know, Monroe won't have a good, much of an opportunity to score here. Well, looks like we're going to see some wildcat here with Riley Culver, as it looks Actually, like. no, this is a kick. Oh, they're going to a field goal, okay. So, again, Tyler last week uh, banged one off the goalpost, but had plenty of, plenty of, plenty of leg. Tyler Westrick in to attempt the field goal on the hold of number two, Riley Culver. Kick is up. Kick is good. And at the end of the half, the score is Milton Redhawks three, Monroe nothing. Well, that was a good way to end the half, John. The score, I mean, that could be, that might be the only score of the game. Oh. We've got an official whistling on the field. The yeah, teams, have teams are being asked to stay. One second. We're going to have to have a kickoff. We're going to have to have a kickoff here. With I one second remaining. In the first half, the score, Milton, three, but well, nothing. It, it. Yep. And a little squib. It, once the up man touches it, if they can tackle him, the half will be over. And the half is over. Well, we're, we're going to wrap up the first half here. Milton scores a field goal at one second and a half. So the score at the end of the half is Milton Redhawks, three, Monroe's Cheesemakers, nothing. We'll be back with you for the second half in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you.